What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the top three ETFs you should be buying in 2021 and throughout the near future. Now, if you don't know what ETFs are, they're essentially a basket of different companies that are designed to outperform the market. So for example, instead of buying 50 different individual stocks, you can buy an ETF that has those stocks within it and that way you still own a piece of all those companies and you limit your risk because you're diversified and you're still getting great returns year over year. Now, adding any of the ETFs that I will talk about in this video will add a great balance to your portfolio. And as I said before, it will limit your risk and still give you great returns. If you're going to enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more investing content like this. Also, if you wanna be a part of a free Discord community, make sure to check out the Discord channel in the description down below. Now, before we get into the three ETFs, the first thing I wanna talk about are the pros and cons to investing in ETFs. Now, the main pros when it comes to ETFs are that there are low fees, it gives you diversification, and it is fairly passive. Now, when it comes to fees with ETFs, you can expect an average fee of 0.44%, but the ones that I go over in this video all have fees that are 0.2% and under. So for example, that's about $20 for every $10,000 you have invested in the ETF, which is obviously fairly low if you're investing that amount. When it comes to the passive growth, when you're buying into an ETF, it's something that you just buy and let it sit. You don't really have to worry about it and check up on it on your day-to-day -day basis. Now, this is what is great about the ETFs. It's fairly passive and it still offers great liquidity. So you can leave any of your positions whenever you want. You can take profits whenever you want when you're buying ETFs. And as I said before, it offers great diversification into many different stocks. Now, the only downside I see with investing in ETFs is that you're spreading your investment kind of thin. Now, when you're buying into an ETF, you may be buying into up to, let's say, 2,000 different companies. So instead of buying three companies that you're very bullish on, you're kind of spreading yourself thin when you're buying an ETF because you're buying into a multitude of different stocks. So depending on your risk tolerance, if you want to risk more, you can buy individual stocks. But as I said before, ETFs are less risk and they still give you great returns year over year. Now, getting into ETF number three, we have IWM, which is the iShares Russell 2000. This ETF is around $230, and whenever you buy IWM, you're essentially getting exposure to a lot of small cap stocks within the United States. This ETF is great because it gives you long-term growth and massive upside. Now, when you're buying into small cap stocks, that means that the market cap for these stocks are under one billion, so that's why you kind of have have a lot of upside and another thing that I want to mention is that the expense ratio for this ETF is only 0.19% which is only about $19 for every $10,000 you have invested now when we get into the holdings for this ETF they have 1,997 holdings and their main holdings are healthcare financials and industrials now, getting into the performance for IWM, since inception, IWM has performed about 9.11% year over year, which is pretty good returns if you're looking to grow your money long term and if you were taking into consideration compound interest. Over the past 10 years, it's been 11.86%, which as we can see, it's been doing better pretty recently. And year to date, IWM is up 64%. As we all know, since the crash of last year, all of the stocks and ETFs have been performing pretty well. So that gives you a gist for IWM. If you're looking to buy into smaller cap companies, IWM is definitely the way to go. As I said before, it has a lot of upside because, of we're, bu because we're buying into smaller cap stocks. If we were to plug this into a compound interest calculator, if we were to start with $5,000 and we threw it into IWM, and we consistently did that for the next 33 years, we would have a million dollars at that 9.11% annual return that it has been giving. Now, if we take that same example, but we use the return it's been giving over the past 10 years, which is the 11.86% return, 
we would become a millionaire within 27 years. So as you can see, it drastically cuts down the time depending on how IWM performs from here on out. So even taking $5,000 and throwing it into an ETF like IWM annually, as you can see, it will give you great returns if you just let it sit and grow. Now, getting into ETF number two, we have QQQ, which is from Invesco. Now, the price of QQQ is around $353, and QQQ actually tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. And that index actually includes the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ based on market cap. And according to Liper, QQQ is actually the best performing fund over the past 10 years based on its return. And it is also known that QQQ has been the second most traded ETF, which offers great liquidity. So for example, you could easily get in and out of this ETF if you so choose. Now, the expense ratio for QQQ is 0.2%, which is about $20 for every $10,000 you have invested, which is only a dollar more than IWM. Now, when we get into the main holdings for QQQ, it is mainly invested in tech, communication services, and consumer discretionary. And some of the top holdings within this ETF is Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. So if you like any of those um, stocks, definitely look into QQQ. It is definitely one of my favorite ETFs because it is so heavy into tech and it offers great returns. Now, since its inception, QQQ has given us 9.5% year-over-year returns, which is slightly higher than IWM. And if we look at the 10-year returns, it is actually at 20.27%, which is actually very, very good. And year-to-date, it is actually up about 44%. So given the same example as the IWM, if we were to invest in QQQ, $5,000 right now and then continuously year over year. It would take us 32 years to become a millionaire, which is one year less than IWM. And if we take the 10 year returns that it has been given us, that time actually gets cut to 19 years. So if QQQ continues to perform at 20% year over year, it would only take us 19 years to hit that millionaire status. Now, QQQ is one of my favorites, as I said before, heavy into tech, and it has a lot of upside. And just to show you guys the power of compound interest, if you were to actually leave those funds in there for another 12 years, at that same 20% return, you would actually have $10.5 million at the end of 31 years. So that is just to give you an idea for investing in ETFs. The longer you leave it in there, the more and more you'll make each year. Now, last but not least, ETF number one, we have VUG, which is Vanguard's growth ETF. This ETF is around $286, and VUG has 280 stocks within the ETF, all focusing on large cap stocks aimed towards growth. Now, the reason why I have this number one on the list, because while still presenting a lot of upside potential for the ETF, it limits your risk because it focuses on large cap stocks. All these stocks are pretty much blue chip companies, well-known, reputable stocks that have been around for a while. And when we get into the expense ratio for VUG, it is a whopping 0.04%, which is the lowest on the list. So about $4 for every $10,000 you have invested. And for the main holdings for this ETF, it is IT, of course, and that is around 46% of its holdings. And then it has consumer discretionary around 22%. And for the stocks within this ETF, we have Microsoft, Apple, Google, and plenty of more that you already know of. And getting into the performance for VUG, since inception, it has performed 11.45% year over year, which is almost 2% higher than QQQ and IWM. So if you're looking for a lot of growth potential and still limiting your risk, definitely VUG is the way to go. That's why I have it number one on the list. And over the past 10 years, it's presented over 16% annually on its return. Now, if we take that same example, $5,000 invested right now and continuously year after year, it would take us 28 years to become a millionaire if we're investing in VUG 
at that 11.45% return it has given, which is five years quicker than IWM and four years quicker than QQQ. Now, if we take the past 10 year returns that it has been given us, it would take us 22 years to hit that millionaire status. So let me know what you guys think about all three of these ETFs in the comment section down below and whether or not you'll be buying these anytime soon. As we can see long-term, all three of these ETFs present great growth opportunities for our money. But as I said before, VUG is number one on the list. So if you wanna start investing today, definitely buy VUG. Also, if you learned anything from this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when I upload. See you in the next one.